And Lord, we just ask these blessings on this little service, not only here, but <coughs> in the world, Lord, that, that we, the church today it should be at, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray this upon the name of your precious Son, Christ Jesus, the risen Savior. Thank you. Amen. 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 <coughs>
at the third verse there. When our work here is done, and our life crown is won, our troubles and trials are over. All our sorrows will end, and our troubles will blend with the loved one. Right out of Scripture. Praise the Lord. How wonderful that it is. Like I said, it's wonderful to have fun to all faces this morning. Beautiful Easter morning that the Lord has blessed us. And Brother Bill Jones, we may, may not never get to see another. He may come, he can come today. If you can think of any better day that the Lord will come than on Easter. That's when he took care of all of it. Have you ever thought about that? And if he come, we that belong to him, we say, come over to Jesus. But those that don't belong, that's the way I wrote a song several years ago, wait a little long to we see him. There's so many that's out to see him. Think about that. But you know, there's a set time, Brother Dale. And when that time is reached, and we don't, hey, God don't know about the same time we go. We, it's not on his calendar. He knows exactly. This has been set before the world was. And when that time rolls around, all the friends in the world is not going to extend it. So, but today is the day of salvation, Lord, not for Now is the accepted time. Thank you very much. Good. That God has been to us, what He's done for us, what He's doing for us, and what He will do for us one day after a while. He's promised, and His promises are true. Come on, Brother Paul. Thank you, Lord. I've been running all the morning. <laughs> Last time that we were together, he snatched me and went down to the door to clean down the room. His wife said she'd take care of me, so I hope he is. We have a good time here. Bless him real good, boy. The 
disciples came to see the body of our Savior, who had gave his life so free, who had gave his life so
Praise the Lord. Yeah. 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 We ain't practicing long. Are you wanting to? Yes. Well, there you don't. You must have had some serious words. Lord, no, no. Always. That's all we've tried. It's been a long time.
how true that is. <laughs> I said last weekend that I said I've had a glorious time all weekend. This weekend, I've had a glorious time all weekend. Amen. The Lord will bless us to have those days. Even in the midst of trouble that's going on, just like the doctor foretold, the Lord foretold us that the earthquakes and divers places, all matters of disease and starvation, hunger, all kinds of things going on since the world began from time to time. Wars and, and rumors of wars and places are still going on. It doesn't change. But during all of that, Brother Chris, he said, in me, you have peace. This morning, I've got that peace. And you know that that is a free gift from God that, you know, we, we can't get it on our own. We, there ain't no way that we can get good enough. But what he wants is us to love him like he loves us. To show, and the way we show that love, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What was the first one that he spoke about? That one? He said, hold it in advance, dear God, keep your commandments. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And to love thy neighbor, that's what I said. On these two commandments hang all the law If we do that from the pure heart, God will accept us. And when we begin to, to, to think about the goodness of God and what He's done for us, and uh, the least we can do is brag on Manifest what He's put down inside of us and if that love wants to know. <laughs> don't worry about these little young It is pure joy in my soul to see them. <laughs> How loud they get. Lord bless you. I'll get loud. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Glad you all are here. We better have angels among us here. Angel from us, that's good for the
appreciate our good time. We're blessed to hear with us good health most of the time. Thanks. That's real good. While she sings, let's move about folks here with one another. Those of you that want to. Stillness filled the heavens.
Brother Charlie, I'd ask the church to remember me and my family and remember Terry, my co-worker, he's not in good health spiritually or physically, so we pray for him. All that would like to have a part of this prayer, just lift your hand, God bless each and every call the church hand. Anybody else? Somebody else, we'll turn to you come lead us in this prayer. Everybody pray. Things that Satan throws in our way, 
Don't let none of that get in your way. Listen to that still small voice. And that's the Lord speaking to you and saying you need to be a better man or a better woman. And we're so thankful that you're all here today and that uh, hoping and praying that the gospel will be poured out today. I'm talking about it's not in me, Brother Allen. No way, no how. It's not in Brother Bruce. Ain't nobody else. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that I'm telling you, as he said, no man cometh unto me. Jesus said that except my Father draw him. That means that he's here in us. And if we get this preacher out of the way, the message will come forth. Now it's going to either stand for you or it's going to stand against you. Right. Amen. When that word comes out and you hear it and you know what the truth is, you will accept it, it will stand for you. If you reject it, it will stand against you. I want to tell you that ahead of time. And uh, they told me that 36 years ago. And Brother Boris, I believed it. And I said, I don't want that to stand against me in judgment. Jesus, while he was here, he said, These words in which I speak will judge you in the last day. Yes. And we've been in the last day, Brother Allen, for a long time. And when this last day is come out on planet Earth, is over, <coughs> infinity, eternal, will roll around, and all of us that make preparations will be in that forever and forever. All those that haven't made preparations, eternity is going to roll around, and you'll be in that, and you'll not want to be there. And, and and some, of, some will say, and this is what the devil puts on people's mind. There he goes again to talk about that awful place called hell. Listen, that right there caused me to begin to understand that I did not want to go there. And I did not have to go there. Neither did any, anybody have to go there. It was never made for mankind, but it was made for the devil and his angels. Yeah, that's right. And it said in the scripture, all nations that forget God. So we don't want to forget him. We want to keep him first and foremost in our life. But we're thinking about it in the scriptures and the New Testament. Like I spoke this morning over there, we'll try to uh, follow the Spirit the best we can and try to get this out. Listen, a little chapter before what I started speaking there, and I kind of hit on it a little bit over there this morning, and I wanted to, but I know that I didn't have time, and I still don't have time, but we'll try to follow the Spirit to put it on our mind. When the Lord was here in the flesh, and he established all kinds of wonderful works, proving for surety that he was truly the Son of God. Uh, for even them old prophets, listen, the prophets prophesied about what he was going to do, and them old Jew boys that was here said, surely, some of them said, this is the Son of God. Surely, he is the Messiah that was promised. Have you ever seen anybody do as many miracles powerful miracles as this man does. Have you ever seen anybody raise somebody from the dead? No, never had. You can read about God bless certain ones of prophets back in the old scripture to raise people from the dead, but I'm telling you that if all the things that the Lord done while he was here, uh, I'm talking about raising people from the dead, healed all manner of sickness, had been written down, this world could not contain the books that's written there in. Think about it. But he put enough in there that we know for surely he's the Messiah. The Savior of the world. Think about how good he is. I'm telling you that he sat down on that mountain there knowing that he was going to face a horrendous death worse than anybody had ever done. That's what Isaiah said also. His vestige was so much more than any man that his form, his body here more than the sons of man. That's what he done for us. And here he is out on that mount praying earnestly. And his sweat became as great drops of blood. I fall to the ground asking the Father if there's any way that I can accomplish the work that you sent me to do here without having to taste and drink this bitter cup. I make it so. But not my will but thine be done. He accepted it. He did not want to face that awful. He was dreading it. He knowed in his body uh, that, the, listen, he said the spirit is willing, uh, but the flesh is weak. Uh, and he knowed in his body there was weakness there. And he was dreading it, just like we do. Yeah. Amen. He knowed that it was going to be great pain, brother. And he had dreaded it, but he looked at me and you, brother Bruce, and everyone that's here, right down through the telescope of time, what daddy used to say, and know we need the Savior. Yes, he did. And when he was praying there on that mount, I mean, he was dreading it real bad. Going to them old boys, and they're asleep. Couldn't tell you not watch with me. Think about how honored the people are. We are all that way. Weak little creatures. He knows that. 
Yeah. Could you not watch with me for at least one hour? Come back again, still, they're sleeping on, you know. Third time, <coughs> still sleeping, he said, sleep on. In other words, he was dependent upon God to bless him to come through. He could not get nothing from us. That's what it's talking about, that we could not help him in any manner. He knew he was going to have to suffer it for himself and himself alone. Think about that in that body. When he prayed there on that mount for me and you, you know what he was praying? He said, Father God, these that thou hast given me, thine they are, and now they're mine. What's he talking about? Them apostles. Foundation we're built on. He said, don't take them out of this world, but keep them from the evil that's in this world. God's the same God. He can keep us, uh, uh, Christian men and women, uh, from the evil that's in this world if we'll do what He said to do. Yeah. And listen, yeah. He said, I pray for them that you make them one. I'm with us even as I am one with you and you are one with me. Not only them, but all that will hear them. Yeah, I can look back through here and brothers and sisters that here says, and we believed it, didn't we? Ain't she glad we believed it? And we've been made one with Him and with the Father. One. You know what one is? That means the whole body is in the body of Christ. And He's the head of it. And we're that body. And listen, we're going to keep persevering by uh, keeping our eyes and our faith upon the Lord Jesus Christ until He comes. And I'm telling you, when He comes, faith's going to end inside. And He's going to split that Eastern sky and it's going to be a quick word. And we're going to meet Him in the air forever be with the Lord. And it could be today. Think about it. Yeah. And in the spirit, Brother Chris, I can say, come Lord Jesus. But I think about some that's here that's good moral people that I love dearly, and I know you all do too, and I worry about them. I pray about them just about every day when they come to my mind. I say, Lord, I don't know what's keeping them out, but Lord, move it. Bless them to know what it is and move it out of the way. Yeah. Bless them. Help them, Lord. To turn her life over and see what mouthful blessing in this life truly is. Yeah. And to know there's a hope that goes beyond this world of everlasting life. It's called a home in heaven. I, I one day after a while, I'll think about it. Well, when he got up from there and he went across that little brook of Kebron there. And listen, he oftentimes would take the, uh, the apostles there and gather and pray and talk and, and one thing he'd teach them and things, Brother Bruce, and, and Judas Iscariot knowed exactly where it was at and God done it on purpose uh, that he'd know exactly where it was at. Why? Uh, because that he knew uh, that he had to be uh, uh, brought to before that uh, a Roman made court there and be falsely accused. Uh, he knew he'd have to suffer those things. Uh, so he said in motion. Here he was out there with all of them on that night. <coughs> Knowing that he was headed towards all men, all kinds of evil that was going to be upon him and trouble and sorrow and pain. But yet, he persevered through it and went. Listen, when they got there, I think about this and I'm telling you it breaks my heart. But I'm glad he done it, brother. It breaks my heart that he had says to go through it, but I'm glad that he did. Because if he hadn't went through it, we wouldn't have no hope whatsoever. That's right. He is the hope of humanity in his name of Jesus. Amen. And when them old boys come, old Judas is carried. And them old boys come with him that was of the high priest servant. And they and Jesus asked him, said, Who seek ye? He knew exactly whom they were seeking. He said it all up before the world was. But he put it in there that we may understand what was taking place on that night. Yeah. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am. He said, I am. That's the name of God a long time ago. I am that I am that sent you. That's what he told Moses a long time ago. I tell the people that I am has come. I am come, and his name is Jesus. I am he. And as soon as he said, I am he, and them boys fell backward. I fulfilled the scripture that old King David had put a long time ago in Psalms about a thousand years before. <laughs> Let him be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let him be driven backward and put to shame 
that wish me evil. Then people wish them evil. There's still people in the world that wish him evil. And there's still people in the world that want to silence him. And they pass laws and says this is a hate crime and to talk the way we talk. I'm telling you that this is not. But this is the undefiled love of God Almighty that sent down Amen. to his son Jesus. And he's still here inside of us. And I'm going to tell about Jesus until the last breath leaves me. I'm yeah. going to brag on him. How about Amen. you, Paul? Amen. 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 Yes. Them old boys got up. They fell backward just like the scripture said. Everything Brother Terry has ever said is going to be. It's already happened. I hit happened right there and was written down. And I'm telling you, they probably didn't even know what took place. Why did we fall backward? Because God said you're going to. Everything God said is going to happen, it's going to happen just that way. They got up. He didn't talk to him again. Jesus said, Who seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I have told you I am he. Now that you've found me, let these others go. Look how that he wanted to keep them safe. Yeah. Look how he wants to keep us safe. What did he say in Revelation? He said, He hid the woman. What woman is he talking about? The church. Where, where did he hide? In the wilderness. Ain't we still in the wilderness? Are we hid? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Think about it. Glory. Hallelujah this morning. Think about what they done. They took our Savior. I found him up like he was a common criminal. And took him there to Caiaphas' house. A high priest there. And the high priest began to speak. I said, what about your disciples? And what about your doctrine? Jesus told them truly. He said, I have spoken openly to the world. I have never spoken anything secretly. I've always told, I went to the synagogues and the temple and have preached to the Jews. He said, if you want to know what I have spoken about to my doctrine, you go find them and ask them. They'll tell you. They can tell you what I've spoken about. That old boy smote Jesus with the palm of his hand, said, talk to the high priest that way. And Jesus said, hey, if I spoken evil, tell me of the evil that I've spoken. But if I've spoken good, why smite thou me? Why is that in there? Another scripture said it was the hour of the devil. In other words, the devil was having a day with the Lord. He was being mean and cruel to the Lord. And it's just the beginning of it, friend, of the suffering. Listen, I'm telling you, they took him from Caiaphas' house at High Priest and took him to that Roman court, that Gentile court. They didn't want to fool with it, did they? They didn't want innocent blood on them, did they? But they got her. And the whole world that's on the outside of the kingdom has got that innocent blood upon them. He'll stand against them that's on the outside. But if you'll choose that blood, he'll stand for you. Amen. It's only blood. It's already been bombed paid for, Brother Terry. It's up to us to receive it. It's up to us to believe it and receive it, and we can have salvation eternal. Think about that. How wonderful is our Savior. You know why you're here this morning? Because God gave you the breath to breathe. Amen. You know why you're here this morning? Because He gave the energy in your body to move about. Regardless if you recognize Him or not. Listen, it rains on the just as well as the unjust, the Scripture said. And I'm telling you that I like rain when we need it. It's good. Some people just look at it like it's just bad. What it's talking about, good and bad, comes upon those that's righteous and unrighteous. But He's giving you the very breath that you're breathing, every one of you this morning. And I thank you for it. I give you praise for it. How about you? Amen. They wouldn't go in that court. Else it would defile them according to the old covenant. They wanted to eat the Passover. What was that? They wanted to do what God said for them to do through Moses a long time ago. But now God is telling them something brand new. And they don't want to do that. Why did they not want to do that? Because God had foretold that blindness had come unto Israel in part. How, why? How, because that he knew that he had to die. And if they'd known that truly that he was the Messiah, the Savior, he wouldn't have died. You look what the Lord has manifested and put in order, Brother Bill, that we have his salvation. Brother Tommy Downer preached several years ago, somebody had to die. Somebody had to die, and Jesus was the one who chose to do this. He's the only one who could. The search was made in heaven. And listen, I'm telling you, no one was found. 
A search was made down here on the earth and under the earth, and no one was found. And behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah stepped forth, the Lamb of God. Yeah. And he was found worthy. And I'm telling you, when he stepped forth, he done the work that nobody else could do. And apparently the way the scriptures read, Brother Rex, nobody else was wanting to do it. But Jesus did. You're talking about a pitiful time we stand together. For those that ain't ready. And look upon that sweet face of Jesus. The one that died for everybody. That everybody can have the hope of salvation and life. And he'll look upon you with them fiery eyes. You say, you didn't receive the best gift that was ever offered to you. Satan has had you bound all of these years, and you was not willing to be released and be a hollering at you, be a preaching at you, be a drawing at you, and telling you, I can bring you out of that prison of darkness that you're bound in, that destruction of hell that's eternal. I can bring you out of it. You're talking about a sad day, Brother Bill. It's going to be sad for people. But they don't have to be. Because all of us, it makes preparation. Like I said a few minutes ago, that we'll meet Him in the air to forever be with the Lord when He comes back. And we'll not see the destruction of this world and all the sorrow therein. I don't want to look back. I want to keep going forward. i to that place called heaven. How about you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why I came. They began to falsely accuse him, and the scripture said they couldn't even find two witnesses that would agree upon the thing. Why? Because it's all lies. Yeah. The Jews absolutely wanted him dead. Yeah. Now don't don't go and tell that I'm against the Jews. I love the Jews. They've got the same old Bible that we've got. Yeah, really nice. And it's just like what Paul said. He said, That which did I done, I done in England. He had a zeal towards God, and I believe a lot of them has a zeal towards God. Yeah. But it's an ignorance. Not receiving the sun. They think the sun is still yet to come. I hope their eyes is open. Sometimes it is. God's love goes everywhere. And he loves everybody and wants everybody saved. Only God can add to the church today they should be saved. And that's what we want today. I can beg to you. I can plead to you. I can tell you everything that comes to my mind. And except you believe God, you're going to die in your sins. Except you believe the Savior and accept Him. Think about that. You know, brother... Bruce, I don't like to talk about things like that. I like to just come together and just rejoice. But I'm telling you, when it's plain spoken, to tell people in the morning once again, and this may be the last opportunity, Brother Terry, that they have to be able to make things right. And I ain't trying to make them hard on you. I ain't trying to ruin your day. I'm trying to bless you to have a better day. Amen. I'm telling you that if you'll turn loose of the world and give your life to the Lord, you'll have a glorious, glorious day that you will never forget. Because you'll be born again, not of the corruptible of these things of this world, but of the spiritual things of God that Amen. you will receive. The glory of God. And that's what we want you to have. Why? Because that love that God has placed in us, we want you to have the same thing. We want you to rejoice in this hope. Listen, when they falsely accused Jesus, and, and, and old Pilate come out there and he began to talk to him and said, What accusation have you brought against this man? <coughs> They said he's a malefactor, an evildoer. He's claimed to be the king of the Jews. Well, take him, Pilate said, and judge him according unto your laws. And they said, hey, we've got a law that says that we cannot put somebody to death. It will condemn us. They wanted somebody else to do that, though. Yeah, yeah. just as bad. So Pilate knew, out of envy and jealousy, that's why that they brought Jesus up. Because, of, listen, people was following him and pulled away from that other, a lot of people. And they even one that old high priest said that we're going to lose our place. Yeah, our result. And he'll take, he'll take over. They, they had no idea what Jesus was even there for. Yeah. You think about that. People that's supposed to know the law and supposed to know, listen, them fellas are supposed to be scribes and understand the law and the word of God and look forward to the time that Jesus and recognize, and some of them did, brother. Some of them, it was so plain they accepted it. They know that he was truly the Messiah. That's why there was 3,000 souls saved on the day of Pentecost, because they know he was truly the Messiah. But many of them did not think about it. And many still yet don't in the world. Listen. There is a number with no man can number that's going to get you over heaven. Yeah. 
That's what it says over in the book of Revelation. But in another place it said, Hell hath widened his borders. Getting bigger all the time from generation to generation. Why is that? Because people die without a hope. And it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. Think about it. Don't be one of them that makes it bigger. But be one of them that comes out of the field of sin. Turn your life over to the Lord. How that you can have life and hang down inside of you. And have manifold blessings in this time. And everlasting life to come. And life's all to the Lord. Now it goes back into Jesus. Jesus. Art thou the king of the Jews? He said, Say this thing to thyself and this others tell you that. He said, Am I a Jew? Now that's Pilate, the Roman governor of that land. Am I a Jew? Your own people have delivered you to me. Your high priest is against you. Your nation is against you. They want you dead. What have you done? He just simply trying to find out what he done. Governor of that land, Romans. In power, just like the old prophecy in the book of Daniel said it would be in the time that the Lord would come and it was just that way. Another proof that it was the Lord that was there. What have you done? Jesus said, if my kingdom was of this world, then would my servants fight for me that I would not be delivered into the hands of the Jews. Yeah. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Think about what he said. But now is my kingdom not from hence. That means at one time of that old covenant I that he had a natural kingdom and he was the head of it. But he said, but not now. <laughs> it's set a brand new one up. It's fixing up. Just bought wide open to all people. Think about it. <coughs> he said, Paul said to him, said, Art thou a king then? It sounded like he was a king. Oh, Pilate, art thou a king then? Thou sayest that I am. He never did claim that he was there. Thou sayest that I am. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. His truth is ranked this morning. Those of you that's on the outside, do you hear his voice? If you hear his voice, that you means you're a believer of it, then you're receiving the truth. And you know what Jesus said about the truth? He said, the truth will set you free. He said, and when you're free of me, you're free of me. Boy, it made it simple, didn't it? Yeah. Believe the truth. Set aside all this yeah. stuff that's going on in the world. You can't do a thing about it. I used to watch the news, but I had to make me to death to think and talk about it. Stuff don't even fool with it. You can't do anything with it. Some people say, well, you're ignorant to it. Hey, no, there's enough people talking to me what's going on with my sons and things. I know what's going on. It's the same thing that's always been going on. Evil. And it's going to go on until the Lord comes back. And he's going to melt the evil and it's going to die forever. And those that's righteous and the only way we can be is by the blood of the Lamb. He's going yonder. How many times have I said that already this morning? Sometimes over and over and over. You can kind of penetrate something under. You know, I think about that sword. That sharper than any two-edged sword His word. Dividing us under. Soul and spirit. Joint and mind. And the discernment of the thoughts and tense of the heart. Yeah. It's here today. It is. And I'm telling you, it's a galaxy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it's a search in the hearts. Yeah. And all of us that believe and have received, we're happy. On our way, ain't we? Amen. Looking Amen. forward to that day. But those that have, I remember that day, Brother Dale, when it was a galaxy me. Oh, my goodness. I remember dropping my head over the thinking, Lord, this is awful. That word just cut me all to pieces. I'm guilty as an old, guilty dog. What can I do about it? What can I do about it? That's why I remember asking myself that. Why it's simple. The Lord said, come to me with a broken and contrite spirit and no light will I turn you away. I begin to boo boo. That's the best thing I know to do. I was broken hearted and I began to boo boo. What not change me. Was before, just a few minutes before that, I was swallowing it down, man. I was swallowing it down. Pride. That's that pride, brother. Yeah. But I wasn't ashamed no more, brother. And when did he saw that I got everything out of the way? That means that shame too. Yeah. That I was willing to just, I didn't care who saw me the boo-hoo. care less. 
I said, as for me and mine, that's I'm going to serve the Lord. If the rest of them wants to go to hell, so be it. God gave them the choice to do that. But I'm going to go to hell. How about you? That's what we're going to exercise. That's why Jesus came. That's why we celebrate this time of year. His death, his burial, his resurrection. That's a salvation, brother. That's life to come from that. Think about it. He went out and told them old boys, how it did. Hey, you boys, I find no fault whatsoever in it. You've got a custom this time of the year that I release one of them to you. Would you happy to release Jesus of Master? He wanted them to do that. He knows they brought him there for him to jealousy. They hollered out, crucify him. Release unto us Barabbas. You know who Barabbas was? A murderer and a thief and a man of sedition. Listen, the Romans didn't even like him, brother. They didn't care whether he died or lived. And then Jews didn't like him either, but that, man, man that fellow's mean as a dog. I hate to turn him back on the street, but, you know, that's our custom to release one. Uh, let's have the rats. You think about the hatred that was in the eye of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. The hatred that was in them towards Jesus, the Son of the living God. And he was so patient with all that Jesus was. Still he is. That love was just pouring out. Could I not call for more than 12 legions of angels and relieve me from this? But then how could the scriptures be fulfilled? Yeah. You know what it said in the old Bible at the end of it? I wonder if the Jews look at that. How could we have life? Had he, he said, before that great and noble day of the coming of the Lord, I'm going to send Elijah. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Yeah. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. You know what that means? No salvation is. Just turn. Have that, boys. Be in bondage of the devil. Die and die and never die. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. So he suffered it to be so nifty all the way, knowing the suffering that he was going to go through. Yeah. Hey, yeah, listen. By the custom of the Romans, and boy, it rough, this Patty. They take a whip that was three thrown with bones and metal on it. And I'm telling you, when them old Roman soldiers, brute men, would whip it, Brother Terry, it'd rip big chunks of meat out of people's back. Sure. And if they went into that and they had been lying, guess what? They start telling the truth. And that's what happened to Jesus. And he done it there. Exactly scorched and had him scorched there. And you know what? When he was scorched, and they put that robe upon Jesus. That crown mashed down these big old thorns along with my finger, mashed down on him. Put that purple robe on him, put a ring in his hand, and set him down and mocked him. And Roman soldier bowed the knee to him and said, Hell, king of the Jews, in mockery, that all he had to do was speak death to him and they'd have died. But he had mercy upon them because he knew he was dying for them too. Yeah. That's love. That's love, brother. When they ripped the beard out of my Savior's face, he took it. When they took that reed and beat him over the head with them thorns on his head, he took it. When they beat and chucked big chunks of meat out of his back all over him, he took it. No wonder that God told me. Isaiah, write this down. I want my people to know it. 52nd chapter of Isaiah. Almost at the end. His vestige was so much more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. His judgment was taken from him, 53rd chapter. Who shall declare his generation? Brother Bruce, I'm looking at some that's declaring his generation. Yeah, they, generation after generation. As time goes on, there'll be people here that's declaring his generation. Yeah. 
But there's going to be always people that scoffers say, I don't believe none of that. That's just made up. I'm telling you that if you could feel what I feel down inside, you'll know for surety that it's real. If I could just open it up, one old man, listen, a preacher years ago said, if it was like an old a quart jar that you could take the lid off and reach down and put some in somebody else, I know that they'd come to the Lord. Yep. Yep. But the way that you did it is the same way I did, Brother Turner. It's faith believing. That's it. I believe it. It's impossible, oh, impossible, impossible to please God without faith. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And by faith, the elders in the old scripture received a good report of God. Through faith, God created the heavens and earth and all things <coughs> that are in from nothingness. He spoke it into existence. Yes. Through faith are we saved. It was at a time that them old boys in the old scripture, it was by faith they were saved. Why? Because the door wasn't open yet. They was looking for the future when the Messiah was going to come and open the door of salvation. But now it's open and it's still standing open wide. And if you want it, then you got to get started and go through it. And when you get inside, you'll know what I've got. Because you'll have it. And when you get inside, you don't go back through that door. No, sir. There's another one set out in the future somewhere when he splits that eastern sky, and it's going to end in faith. The faith's going to end on that day because we're going to go through that door into salvation, and it's going to be eternal. Think about it. Here Jesus is suffering all those things that probably come out. Behold the man. I find no fault in him because I've whooped him. His story's still the same. And I'm telling you that he had a fear towards all this. Let me tell you about something I've studied. Roman, this is a Roman history on this. Not the Bible. <coughs> that when they come to take over a nation, they studied it thoroughly before they come into it. They know the ins and the outs of the natural. They studied their religion. Yeah. They dug into it. They wanted to get into the very psychic of their mind that they might be able to control that. So that governor was not stupid. Let me tell you what his wife done. His wife sent a message because she knew it was important. Sounds to me like pretty close. Sounds to me like it's pretty close to this, this man called Jesus. And God was showing them, and through that show us. She sent a messenger to him and said, Have no dealings with this just man. For I have suffered many things in a dream concerning him. He was already fearful about it. Yeah. Yeah. And when he showed Jesus out there and said, I find no fault in him, look at him. I beat him like I've done all the rest. You all know our customs. And I'm telling you, he's still telling the same story that he did when he come in here. So he's telling the truth. I find no fault in him. Yeah. Crucify him, crucify him. They hollered it out again. Why? He wanted to know why. Yeah. I find no fault in it. For we have a law. And our law says a man that makes himself the son of God is worthy of death. Oh, that's why he got more fearful. He know them old laws. He studied them. And he's thinking in his mind, Brother Chris. They don't say this in the scripture. I know how man's mind thinks. Could that be possible that he's the Messiah? Yeah, is it possible? Is their religion the real religion? of the world. Have you ever thought things like that when, when you're young and are looking and hear all these, you know, Muhammad and all this other stuff you say, when you before you give your life to the Lord, you say, Could, no, that can't be real. No, that because look at here, they're still dead. All they're still dead. Boy, when I heard about Jesus, I said, Hey boys, that could be real. Because he liveth forevermore. Because he lives, he had a purpose. Not just to have people to follow him like all these other religions. He wants that too. But there's a payday coming. And people like a good payday. We don't like to work for nothing. God knows that. We're talking about the real God. And he made a way to where there's a payday coming that I'm telling you right now, Brother Lord, we're laying a treasure in heaven. Where moth can't eat it up. Where rust can't throw it away, neither can thieves steal it away from us. Because the master's taking care of it. And we're going to receive it one day after a while. Because we're going to keep on keeping on, Brother Bruce. 
So he goes in. Pilate goes into him after they made that decision. He said, he made himself the son of God. He didn't make himself that. He was the son of God. That's the way the Jews put it. <coughs> Look at old Pilate. The boys, he comes in and looked at Jesus. Trouble, worry down inside of him more than ever. Well, it's our thing. In other words, where'd you come from and what's your purpose here? If you study that, break it down. Jesus is sent there. Jesus knew that he wanted to let him go real bad. And Jesus did not want to be let go because he needed to die for all of us. Amen. That we have salvation. God got the perfect plan. We need to believe it, trust in it, move out in it, and live in it. That's right. Not die in it, live in it. He said, I wouldn't say a thing to it. Pilate. This is a carnality sense. And listen, this old flesh, it's God. You've got to keep her down. Let's take that chest out. I'm the governor of this place. I know people. I know people. You've got to watch it. You've got to let the spirit reign and rule, not the flesh. Do you not know, Jesus, that I've got the power to crucify you? Or I've got the power to turn you loose. Jesus answered it just exactly right. Oh, he would have no power whatsoever over me except it were given to thee from above. Oh my goodness, you reckon he got more scared? From yeah. above? Yeah. I'd say he did. Yeah, but you know how Jesus lightened that load on him? He said, but those that have delivered me unto thee have the greater sin. Yeah. Have the greater sin. Have the greater sin. In other words, he didn't say you didn't have no sin. That's the reason why I come and take care of that. So he was releasing the load off that man. He knows his mind and heart. He knows you all. He knows all of us. He knows how to release loads is off of our mind and heart by that spirit. He knows how to save people when we can't. That's why I said if I can get this out of the way, it may sound silly in some of the things I say, and I'll wonder about it later and say, it's bound to reach somebody. They either going to choose it or they're going to do it or they're going to reject it. Because that's the way God's Word works. Think about it. So here, Pilate seen that, so he goes back out. And it said in the scripture of the book of John, said that he sought, really sought hard to have him released. I find no fault in him. I want to release him. Well, he done released Barabbas, they just had the custom of one. <laughs> but he wanted to release him back. And you say, crucify! Crucify! They had tried everything in the world to try to convince him. Oh, they, they listen. They become an evil law. They know, I know, they know how to get to that man. You reckon the devil was working in their mind. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do this evil here. Tell him this. I guarantee he was right there on the scene of work. Amen. Oh, yeah. And them old boys thinking out there talking with each other and that high priest and the Jews and stuff. I love them. I want to keep reminding you, I love them. I want them to be saved. Yeah. Jesus come for them. Jesus is in us and that love, sir. I want everybody to be saved. Right. Listen, Jesus died for me too. It was my fault. Yeah. Jesus died for you all. It's your fault. Because yeah. yeah. we need the Savior and He was willing to do it. So yeah. it's all. Yeah. Ain't one above another of a fault. I'm just telling it just like the scriptures tells it. That's what I'm trying to get across to people. And Jesus says, Pilate! Man that makes himself a king is not Caesar's friend. If you release him, you're not Caesar's friend. Right. Caesar's going to be upset. Oh my goodness. And Pilate starts to think, mm. these loudmouth Jews will make sure that Caesar finds out about this. Because yeah. they're wanting this man to be bad. Yeah. And when Caesar finds out about this and I've let a king loose, I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. He'll take my heat. Amen. Boy, ain't the devil ain't he cunning with his life. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that he's cutting you all this morning? Those of you on the outside? He's making excuses right now. How do you know that? Sister, he done me that way. He done me that way for years, making excuses. Oh, look at that fellow over. I remember when he broke he broke down one day. He got mad in a bull. Why, if he can make it to heaven, so can I. <laughs> it don't work that way. You know what that fellow may have done? He may have, and he shouldn't have. No excuses. 
Right. But he has an advocate with the Father, right. which is Christ what, Jesus. What was he that night? He came to the Lord and said, Lord, have mercy on me. I acted like a fool. Broke down God angry, said things I shouldn't have. Please apply your blood. Now that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Amen. And if you didn't do that, he's headed to the same place that you're headed. Do you want to spend eternity with somebody that's not a righteous man? That's in heaven. I want to make it if nobody else does. Yeah. Set everything aside. Every sin and every way aside. And run this race with patience. In other words, get in it. Set every, all the troubles aside. Don't let the devil trick you and say, well, this and that fault and that and fault. No. You'll always find fault. Always. And this right here, you're going to find fault. You look, you'll find plenty of it in me. Me doing my utmost best. Try like a baby. Ask the Lord to forgive me. You're going to find fault in me. And he forgives me. And he will you too. Yeah. Amen. That's that great love. Thank you. So when he said that, he said, Brother Chris, I, I could just about visualize a bit of that. He brought out a, a little cauldron of water. He said, Brother Andrew, you wash his hands. He washed his hands. I washed my hands of the whole matter. Take him and crucify him. And he gave his soldiers leave. Mind them Jews and do what they say to do. And I have never read any words in Roman history that that ever happened. I'm not talking about that happening. I'm talking about happening again to anybody else. Never happened. You think about these things. I'm telling you that the devil will sleep and he gets what he wants. You know why he wanted Jesus dead? Because everybody that ever was born, once that they was dead, they couldn't get up out of that death. Right. They couldn't rise up. Dead. He had them bound. Right. Had that chest thing, and I got that one. Okay. We'll go do that. But the master, he got up. <laughs> they let the labor Shocker up. to the devil, would it? He actually thought. Now, people, I mean, ain't no use to say it, but now the devil, you know, he was confused. No, he actually thought that he was a sleep lawyer, an evil lawyer. I ain't talking about lawyers. I'm talking about evil lawyers. That he could figure out and finagle in the word because he knew God stood on his word exactly and would not back up. And he thought he was slicker than God and that he could get all mankind that God loved so much headed towards the same hill as him. Then we'll just spend eternity here upon the earth and we won't have to go to hell because God loves his hand creation. Mm -hmm. And he will not cast them into that place. That's what he thought. But he had no idea that God was fixing to make a way for God's people. He might be smart. He's smarter than I am. <laughs> he knows the word better than I do. But he don't know everything. He's not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. And let me tell you, friend, he's not got as much power as he wants to have. Because when Jesus raised up from the dead, he said, All power in heaven and earth is mine. Amen. Amen. And I've got the keys of death and hell that Satan wants to have. I've got. Yep. Now I can either bind you up or I can loose you. And I really, really want to loose you. Yep. But if nothing else will do you, I'll bind you up. I'm a just God. He's a just God. Amen. He's not going to make a way for somebody that he didn't make for me. Nope. He's going to do the same thing. Yep. The foundation. If God is sure and it's said and it's not going to move for nobody. You've got to come to it just like I did. Brother Chris, Brother Bruce, every Christian man and woman. Think about it. Listen, when all that was there, dear Jesus went bearing his cross. Time flies. Bearing his cross. That's what the book of John said. In the other books it said that uh, this other man that was chosen would bear his cross after him. Now, I've heard some people preach that Jesus never did bear that natural cross. The cross that was talked about in the book of John was the load that he had on him. He was a pack of that also. But I'm telling you that the book of John said he's a bearing his cross. They put it on his back. And the other scripture said, after, that this other man was carrying his cross after bearing it. After. After what? After Jesus had bore it there for a while. People are all the time trying to find fault, but if you look into all the scriptures, you'll find the truth of the matter. Here he was, going up to all God to heal. Place of the skull. 
Brother Bruce laid him down. And that scripture of Isaiah said he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearer was done, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, judgment was taken from him. I said it a while ago, who shall declare his generation seeing that his life is taken from him? Yeah. He's living out his life in us. Right. Who shall declare his generation? We've got his life in us and we're declaring his generation. Yeah. He's, He's living in us. Baby. He's going right on. In spite of the old devil, he's going to go right on and right on. And I'm telling you, it's going to go right on and right on for eternity. Yeah. Think about it. Willingly laid himself down, never fought, probably surprised him, Roman soldier. Not seen this before. Men will fight tooth and nail. Church promise and everything. Sometimes it's got to thump out, beat them until they're unconscious, and then put the nails in. Like a lamb. That's what, that's what 700 some years before it come about, Dale, old Isaiah prophesied exactly what it was. Drove the nails in his hands, in his feet. Thorny crown. Scripture had done already said, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And he was lifted up between the heavens and the earth. Yeah. And Pilate put over top of the superscription of the writings, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And the Jews didn't like that. They said, Say that he said that he was the King of the Jews. What I have said, Pilate said, I have said. It's going to stay that way. Because he, I think he figured that he really was. Yeah, I, think so. I really do. I think that he saw all the things that he saw and began to look into it. I believe that he really thought that he was the king of the Jews. <clears throat> and they was envious, as the scripture said, and jealous of him. Wanted to read that and think about it. Three languages that said him. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. People say it, I'm telling you all the time, says Latin has Way, way back before then was a dead language. If it was dead, why did he put it on there for the people that's coming out of that city that couldn't read Latin and know Latin? Another proof that these so-called scientists don't know what they're talking about. But God's word is true. Amen. Don't follow after lies of the world. Because I'm telling you, there's vehement amount of lies in the world. Oh. Trying to keep people confused, deceived, that's what devil, the devil comes to deceive, to steal and to destroy. Yeah. And he's still doing it, and he's trying to, with each and every one of you all, take the devil's head. Thank you, man. Rare death, third hour, book of Matthew said. Three hours, the sun was shining in the rain. And that sixth hour come about, darkness fell upon all the earth. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour. And it said in the book of Luke, and the sun was darkened too. I wonder what it's talking about, the darkness was on the hall. I'm telling you all the evils and the death and the sorrow and everything was all on Jesus and he bore every bit of it. That's that darkness that it spoke of at first, and then it said, and the sun was darkened. A natural darkness too. Old scripture said the darkness that could be felt. He bore that, not having no guile in his mouth and no sin in his body whatsoever. The perfect Lamb of God accepted our sin, our death, our sorrow. Seeing that he died once and for all, then we're all dead. Meaning that we have no excuse. We're all dead. Judgment has already come on that part, that we're all dead. Now seeing that we're all dead, then we need a Savior to be quickened and brought alive, don't we? Yeah. Amen. This Savior called Jesus. When did he listen? He's hanging on the cross, and I need to hurry. Hanging on the cross, <laughs> and that knife air rolled around in that darkness, and he began to cry out to the Lord. <coughs> Talking about God. And God, when that darkness came, I believe that he turned his back on his son. Why? Because over the book of Moses. Moses being a type in the shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Moses. Holy God, I desire greatly to look upon your face, face to face. Best of best. Tete a tete. Think about it. He desired that greatly. And God said, no man has looked upon me and lived. Why? Because there's sin in you. 
Yeah. Didn't Jesus bear all of our sin? Didn't it say that no man, Jesus said, no man taketh my life, I give it freely? Yes. At the very moment that he gave it freely is when it was going to be. If God would have kept looking at him as that sin, he would have died. Then it wouldn't have been free because judgment would have been passed upon him. So here's God. He said, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Lemma, so back to me. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What's that mean? That means to turn your back and somebody walk away from him. Yeah. Was he completely gone? No, he could still sit, he could still hear Jesus. How do you know that? Because when that knife there rode around, he said that. He said, I've got to finish this, what the prophecies have said. He said, I thirst. As the last thing need to be fulfilled. He fulfilled every bit of it, but it had been prophesied that he would say, I thirst. When he said, I thirst, they went and run, the old mean fellows did. Got a hyssop, a little long stick, or put that sponge on it, dipped it in gall and vinegar, not water. Still torturing him. Put it up to his mouth, and the scripture said, he took it not. It was fulfilled. Everything he said was going to be fulfilled. <coughs> then he hollered out to God. Holy Father, I render my spirit unto thee. And he gave up the ghost. Yeah. He chose the very moment. And when he said that, Father heard him. And I believe with all my heart that he looked right upon. And judgment was passed. That's why that he bore our sin and our death. And judgment was passed. Seeing that he died once and for all, then they're all dead. How do you come alive? Same way he did. Yeah. By the Holy Ghost. Put him in Joseph's new tomb. <coughs> Joseph borrows of Arimathea. Carved it out for himself. And he thought a whole lot of Jesus. He was a disciple secretly because of fear of the Jews. Come and begged Pilate the body, got the body. Him Nicodemus wrapped him up in linen with them sweet spices with her. Put a napkin on his face at the custom of the Jew. Put him in that tomb laying there, closed and sealed a big stone upon him, and walked away from it. And the third and glorious morning by the power of God. I want, I want, you, I want to mention this right here. I know I, I, I need to hurry. His... Listen, that message, that, that form, that body, Hebrew said that that was the veil. His flesh was the veil. See, there was a natural veil in that natural temple, which is a type of the shadow of the spiritual things, that was going to come. And it had angels upon it. And then angels was on that veil that was there that separated the holies of holies in that natural building to the ones that was outside it. You know? And the angels was looking towards each other and their wings almost touched. And when that bell of the temple rent the flame from top to bottom, the angels separated. And you can look back in there. Now I want you to look at Jesus being his flesh that bell. Could I not call for more than 12 legions of angels at any time? That was all around they could Yeah. Do you not know what Satan had said to him? said, God has given his angels charge concerning thee. At least that thou dash thy foot against the song that they would bear thee up with their hands. They was there. And he put this in the scripture to prove that they was there. For on that third and glorious morning that God raised him up alive forevermore because he lived, we can live also. Praise the Lord. When Mary got there and looked in there, she saw an angel sitting at the head where Jesus was at and saw an angel sitting at the feet where Jesus was at. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen. She turned and looked outside there, thought it was the keeper of the garden there. Where have you laid it? Think about that. Wanting to, wanting to try to take care of it. Where have you laid it? Jesus. Not knowing that it was Jesus. It was him. He said, Mary. And when he said, Mary, she knew it was him. When he calls your name, friend, you know that it's him. Amen. Amen. You better listen to it. Yeah. You better come to it. And she was the one to come to him so bad and put her hands on him. And he said, touch me not, for I have not ascended up to the Father. I've not presented this land that was slain for all mankind. It's pure and holy now because it's been taken care of. And I'm going to present it to the Father, this blood. 
that he'll accept everybody that has that blood on them. But I'm telling you that he done that, and he said, now, you go tell the brother. He said, that I, I'm going to ascend to the Father and your Father. I'm glad he said it that way, my Father. I'm going to ascend to God and your God. You go tell them that I'm risen and I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. And he was seen of many. He was seen of the apostles. Know that he'd been raised from the dead. Think about it. The angels a proof right there that the veil had been rent in twain, that was separated. And he was right between, which was the veil that Hebrew talked about. That he died for me, he died for you. Salvation is free to the believer. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Brother Dale, we could go on and on. But except a person believe, you're going to die in your sin. Amen. We can read about the scriptures world. Paul that he preached all night. Yeah. A little fella in the wind that said, I just kind of picture him sitting there. Listen to the old Paul preaching. None of them didn't break up. They sat there listening. Here he was. He was sleeping. Fell out until he's dead. Killed him. Killed him. But he was wanting to listen. And this old creature at weak. Fall asleep. Just like him old possible said. What Paul did, he walked right over there where he fell down and got killed. He laid his hands on him and said, rise up by the power of the living God. And he raised up alive. Yeah. Why? Because he was willing to hear the truth. God knew his heart and knew that he had work to do. That's why Paul raised him up. I'm telling you that Jesus said a long time ago, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. Never die. He that is dead <laughs> and believeth in me is going to live again. Think about that. And that's whosoever. What well, said whosoever that believes. Think about that. Life eternal to the believer can be the receiver of it. How he mean that? The very moment, 36 years ago, that I turned my life over. He quickened this inward man that was once imprisoned by old devil when I reached age accountability. And he freed it and he quickened it, which means to be brought alive. He resurrected it from a dead state to a lively hope. That has to happen first. And then out here, it might be today, Brother Boris, when he splits that eastern sky, he will quicken this outward man. Even the creature itself shall be delivered. Amen. If you're talking about a glorious time when both of them together is quickened and alive and live forevermore, get to go to heaven. You know what the world thinks about things like this, Brother Charlie? They think it's foolishness. They think it's a fairy tale. I remember my daddy back years ago when I was a young man. This is not a fairy tale. Yeah. Believe this. This is not a fairy tale. There's men that has wrote all kinds of books that's fairy tales. Their imagination, and they seem so real to some people. But I'm telling you, this is real. And to the believer can be the receiver of it. May God bless you, my prayer. I'm glad you're here this morning. I hope I didn't offend anybody in the wrong kind of way. I hope the message is plain. You know why that I spoke the way I did today? Because the Spirit put up on my mind and heart. Not just today. And Brother Roger Maynard the other day was talking and, he, and we both agreed. Said, you know, we need to explain in best detail that we can to our young people who the Savior is. Yeah. And it's been on my mind ever since. Do you think that the devil put that on our mind? No. He don't want, he listen, don't the want devil that. don't want you to know who God is. He don't want you to know these things that are secret to the world, but to those that's born again, God has revealed it to us. He wants you to have that. So while that the thankful hearts, why don't you come up and sing another song? While that they sing, if there's somebody ready for the old church, don't put it off. Don't let the devil steal it away from you. Don't let the devil tell you that you sinned went too far, that you can't do what the Lord has asked you to do. 
because that's a lie. The Lord said, if you'll turn your life over to me, I'll never leave you, never forsake you, go with you all. I'll direct, I'll guide, and I'll keep you. When you need a, a, a spanking, you'll spank us. He's our Father. When you need lifting up, sit on the mountain, I'll set you on the mountain top. I'll take care of it. I'll feed you, I'll guide you, I'll direct you. There'll be a spring, a, a, a spring, a, a well of water springing up inside of us unto everlasting life. Another promise. Where a man will never thirst again. What? For the truth. Because he will reveal it to us. Yes. To the believer. Well, if they say, if there's somebody ready for the old church, let's see. Now.
I'll tell you what we will do. Uh, I'll start right with the right. We might be done some crying on it. But God loves his people and he don't want anybody lost. So why would they sing if they'd be one or more here that be strong enough, close enough in the spirit, wanting to do what's right, put one foot in front of the other, come up, I won't embarrass you. You shake my hand, go back to your seat. But oh my goodness, how far that this goes in the eyes of your loved ones here. To get serious, more serious, Brother Chris, to be praying for all of you. He's 
know why? They can rejoice and things like that. Because it comes out of the Word of God and it's true. It's got the power in it. It's got the glory. It's eternal. step farther with this it goes a long way to the eyes of God and it blesses us to be able to see this but Charlie that uh, some people will raise their hand and say pray for me would there be one or more in this house that is serious about their eternal soul and would like this band of Christians to be a praying for you and I'm telling you we get serious about this we'll be praying for you you know we pray for you anyway but it seems like Brother Bruce, it charges us up that we, we pray more earnestly and longer and more often because we can just see that hand in our mind, you know. Would there be one or more here that would be willing to just raise your hand and say, Church, pray for me. God bless. God bless. God bless. Good morning. You think about that. That did not come from the devil. That come from the power of the living God. He's the one who added to the church today. They shouldn't be saved. He's the one that says and reach out and touch people in a way that there ain't no way that I can put it in work to let them know that he's real and they need a savior. We got a lot to pray for, yes. and we'll be afraid. God bless each and every one of you. I hope you have a good, glorious Easter day with your family and enjoy yourself. I mean, just it, it's glorious. But I'm telling you that if you really want to enjoy yourself. There, he said, there he goes again. He won't shut up. Turn your life over to the Lord and you'll really have joy in him. Anything else needs to be spoken to you won't need to be given out. I understand that uh, Brother Jimmy doesn't want that big old church here next Sunday night. So we want to tell you, you know, move to Turkey Creek to visit him. Brother said, I've heard else other song he's 40. We, we talked about that previously and I asked Brother Bruce and some others. So we kind of landed on that night a little before he was too busy this summer. If anybody wants to go up to Turkey Creek, they've been there before. Holler at some other followers up. We have a good time. They do start at 7, though, get there, okay? I give it up right then. Hazel did give it up. This is for the love of all the And then we've got the Union Communion of last Saturday night in this month. That's the easiest way to say that. Last Saturday night in this month, we've got the Union Communion here, and also a business meeting on that night at 6 o'clock. Remember that, 6 o'clock. And also, the brethren of our association is going to have that fellowship meeting at the same time. So, we're expecting a good crowd and a good time in the Lord. So, be glad to have you. Anything else? If there's nothing else, let Bill John give a dismissal. Good Lord, good Lord, again, we come to you thank the Lord for what we've heard and felt here today. Thank you, dear God, for all the many blessings, Lord, that you've given us kind of this little life we have. Lord, we thank you, dear God, for it. We ask your Lord that you dismiss us from this little place here, but never from your presence. We ask your God that you will look down upon the ones that raise your hand, Lord, that you will give them an extra little blessing, Lord, to help them protect them, Lord. Let them come in, Lord, before their last and two We ask your God to watch over. Guide Rick before we pray. In Jesus' name we ask God. Amen. Amen.